and uh, I have uh, Victor in the backstage helping us with technicals. Hi, Wendy. So Hi. if anything is going on, uh, if something's going wrong, uh, please mark it in the chat if uh, the reception is not OK. And uh, Victor is going to uh, help resolve that with the speaker. Um, Vanji, uh, you're a software architecture and uh, engineering senior manager at Equinix. And uh, I read in your bio that you have um, more than a decade of experience uh, for architecting and developing enterprise applications and middlewares. And as I understand today, you're going to show us how you see the difference between API documentation and product documentation. Thanks a lot, um, Laura. Uh, thanks a lot for the great introduction. Hi, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening for all the API enthusiasts. I am Vanji, based out of California and lead team of engineers and architects at Equinix to deliver and integrate APIs. Uh, in my current role, I also closely work with the Product Architecture Council and product team to enhance the overall developer journey build solution to simplify API integration and evangelize Equinix APIs to improve community reach. So with the this experience and my involvement in API management integration space for the last one decade, I will deliver this talk on sensible API document management guide topic. So this talk, uh, I'll covering five prominent aspects that are influencing the API documentation. So uh, first of all, we should also understand in the API first, API led, API economy terms are commonly used in the digital transformation era. End of the day, we all know that how business APIs can positively impact the business with speed to market, reaching the new markets and customers, new innovations, improved experience for the different personas, reach for different channels. So in this API economy led world, there are multiple type of API used by the organizations, but we can categorize these into two basic classification. First set of API, are uh, a product itself. It means the organizations make revenue by selling these APIs. There are a second set of APIs, a uh, utility API that allow access the digital product of the organization. For example, in my current organization, we do not sell API, but we utilize the API as a facade to access our digital products. Therefore, API act as a utility to access product and add value to the full value chain. To support this spectrum of products versus API, there will be a separate documentation for APIs and products. So getting back to our topic today about API documentation, first of all, we should understand why is API documentation is important. To increase the API economy while the API life cycle, there are many aspects involved. One is API documentation and act as a core pillar for a good developer experience to increase the API adoption. So if we start to drill down this further, the so the API documentation increase the awareness of the capacity of the API and functionality it provides. And it also provides a smooth experience to build apps, allow self-sustainable API adoption rather than like guiding through step by step. And it also reduces the friction between API providers and consumers. Make it easier to maintain the product for the internal team. At the same time, it saves lots of time and cost when onboarding new developers into API consumption. Even though we know that API documentation is important, why is that so hard to adapt and improve? So there can be different diff types of users. There can be different types of business need and technical uh, aspects. Information is not stored in one single location or in one single format. 
there can be code level comments that are not exposed to the documentation level. There are API developers may have their own tactic knowledge that is not transferred into shareable documents. Document exists with ambiguous statements and really uh, not re reflecting the functionalities at all. So to summarize this a quote by Raymond, a unit of documentation, there are always three or more on a given item. One is on the shelf, someone has others. The information that you need is with others. So before getting to the further level, we should know that there are three, there are multiple personas involved in the API value chain. At a very high level, these personas can be divided into two major categories. One, API producers, another one, API consumers. Since we want to discuss about how we can improve our API document strategy and increase the business by growing the API program, let us only focus with API consumer personas in this discussion. There is a full range of personas in API consumer itself when evaluating API documentation solution and API program strategies. So when we consider the uh, within the enterprise, API may be consumed by both the team of devel developers who created it and other teams and business unit throughout the organizations. There are can be another set of um, users who are not within the enterprise, the third party developers, partners, resellers, DevOps, engineers, and architects outside the enterprise. Therefore, designing and choosing the documentation strategy, you have to plan ahead with these personas so that it will dominate your API conception. So with an understanding of this industry and business need uh, and different personas, there are plenty of best practices that we can uh, enforce and deliver better develop experience to increase the API adoption. So to get there, we, we can ask multiple different key questions within our stakeholders and determine what is our documentation strategy. So as a very first uh, level, we have to investigate which type of API that we are going to provide because API does not always implies the RESTful API. It can be also SOAP API or even event driven APIs or in any other format to expose your digital interface to your enterprise. And also we have to look into the types of APIs that can be created for the different business use cases, or it can be a different subscription economy and so far. Another important information is who can access these APIs and information about authorization and authentication level information for the functions, or even in the uh, expiration level, the token details, everything we have to be considered before we design the documentation. Information about how to accomplish what I need with your API, for example, getting start, uh, start a starting guide, or walkthrough of common scenarios, or it, it can be workflows, or it can be a solution by other developers we have to collect them in order to create a proper API documentation strategy. And also we have to ask a question whether the sample codes commonly used, uh, will it help for other developers uh, so that we can include as a code snippet or the SDKs within the uh, API documentation itself. So for each and every endpoints, methods, request URL, parameters, response example, there can be different, different challenges. So defining how to access these endpoints help the developers in a great extent. So since we already have talked about the different personas, but to reinforce, we always have to know our stakeholders which include the API providers, API consumers, or the app developers, API product managers, 
documentarians and develop evangelists and support team so that we know who we are going to address. So along with that, we also have to determine the, the developer journey with our API program. So understanding the developer journey with our API will help a lot to determine the treatment of API documentation that will involve the multiple touch points. Further, we also have to make sure that we combine the developer journey with a different API portals, a different API marketplace technology, so that we identify the complexity of these artifacts and design the content workflows. That will give a very first class onboarding experience to the developer. So put all of these into a summary and when we focus on, we have to have a proper workflow behind the scene. So if we are about to discuss about this, it can, the, always the documentation stay as a single source of truth for the content. It can be inside your developer portal or it can be outside of your developer portal. So at the same time, you also have to focus on how you can version the documentations that can match with your API. So do you, if you have a documentation uh, separately, how you can like collaborate and make a product level APIs documentation. So there is no one file fit into all approaches. So therefore uh, I recommend that we design a custom workflow for your API and a developer's need. So looking into this typical workflow involved with a plan where we already talked about our uh, different personas and needs and stakeholders. And then once we have the plan, we had to create the uh, documentation that supports the, uh, the consumer's need. And once we create the documentation, we have to produce that and do the revise and edit based on the, the developer's feedbacks. Once it approved and published, still you always have to look for the feedback from your different forums. You always have to look forward to understand how you can optimize the content uh, for long run. Then <clears throat> once it, all of these are published, you also have to make sure that you measure the, the statistic. For example, uh, if a documentation is not consumed by uh, API providers, there might be uh, lots of conflict that include what is in the life cycle of the, this content. For example, uh, the, you have to define a proper create, edit, review approach, uh, publish, measure, and retail, how you are going to do all of these stages. Then at, at the same time, you also have to understand what is the nature of your documentation? Is that per API or is that per, per uh, use cases and so on and so forth? So once uh, you have defined all of these, now we have to decide in which format that we are going to present this documentation to our consumers. Uh, it can be uh, stored in a marketplace or it can be a, a company with your API itself, but it can be also exist in your GitHub locations. So uh, you always have to look into that, uh, the format of the content as well. So once uh, it's stored, as we already talked about, how you are going to maintain and how you are going to version it is going to play a crucial role because if you are not following the proper strategy, you may uh, mislead the API developers and the uh, consumers with uh, uh, misalignment with the API release and the documentation release. So you have to be very careful with that and follow the proper uh, workflow. So we recommend that to define your custom workflow for your APIs and the developer need. So, Putting all of these uh, best practices and thinking about how you can improve uh, your modern portal. So 
with, with the based based on the current observation, most of the successful marketplace and portals for the API has a use case driven approach. So which means they will identify the use cases and uh, encourage, encourage the specific application with the more details so that the, the consumers will understand and adapt the, the, what they really want to achieve. Uh, at the same time, it also come up with a getting start guide, which means the developers can, uh, without like going through entire API uh, documentation and specification, uh, the basic general information on getting started with their API will help them uh, to improve their adoption of API. Further, the API mapping also help a lot to explain the information about uh, the given API. So one more co a critical tool over here is a uh, try it tool, or it can be, uh, for example, API sandbox to try out the APIs within the API portal itself. So while the developer reading through the documentation, so they also can try out the APIs along with that, that enables API consumer to understand the, the flow of the API at the same time, inside out what they have to develop with their application. Uh, we already talked about audience. So this is one of the key uh, uh, aspect of designing a, a, a sensible documentation. So you should always understand and focus on relevant target audience. More than that, uh, designing a simpler and clear interface is crucial to help uh, API adoption. In the sense, if uh, uh, the, the created document or the created simple catalog of these APIs and documents are not able to uh, present in a way, or present in a simpler way, so that API consumers may not understand the value and the use cases of the APIs that you have provided. So more than that, you also have to design in a, way of the modern portals should be engaged with the providers and community via the resources like forums or hackathons or meetups or something like that. The reason for that, end of the day, the, the API documentation is the tool for the making a communication between API providers and the API consumers. So if we are not like uh, connecting these two uh, parties, we will fail our approach in a big time. So that it's very important to make sure that you keep these two communities engaged so that we can provide a very well defined API strategies and API documentation strategies for the community. With that, I'm concluding my uh, presentation. Thank you, Anji. Thank you, Laura. It's time for questions. So you can start typing real fast. Um, Brendan uh, is asking that if they are trying to increase the usability of the uh, APIs and code sam uh, by code samples and SDKs, um, can you recommend tools that work well to automate this? Yep. So uh, there are API management product itself, like uh, APG, WSA2, MuleSoft. They also provide a, a API management tool where the API provider themselves can create the uh, the API ecosystem that allow to uh, produce the code snippets and SDKs in the, the portal itself. Uh, if you are not utilizing any of the uh, API management vendors, and if you really want to like uh, um, create everything by yourself, then there are the tools like um, uh, Swagger Hub and everything that provide you and allow you to create the, um, the SDKs automatically. And uh, the open API uh, tools that's available also allow you to create the SDKs by yourself. But at the same time, 
um, in with our experience, sometimes you may have to help the um, developers with some of the GitOps tools. For example, um, Puppet or Terraform templates, if you can create those and provide them, uh, developers can uh, uh, work on and use it for their uh, GitOps purposes. But it's completely depend on which uh, user group, uh, users uh, you want to target. Uh, and it's also depend on the business use case that you want to tackle. In our case, we we are, we are very, we have to close, work very closely with the network engineers and the DevOps, so that we we sometimes we have to focus on some of the uh, deployment tools. Mm -hmm. Could you give recommendations uh, from an information architecture perspective? Um, how to organize the content for a use case driven portal? Cool. So, Stefano, uh, if you can elaborate a little more about um, the the organ the way the, the, I didn't get the question on how where to break out. Would you mind to uh, give me a little more clarification on the information art, uh, architecture perspective so that I can drive my conversation? If not, uh, I mean, uh, if we are looking into like pet store example by um, um, by the Swagger, uh, there is an open API definition for, I mean, along with the documentation, the parameters, description, what are the, uh, what is the return type, what is the uh, methods and uh, how, what are the error codes that we will get. Those details you can define and put into place. But that might be sometime very raw information. So you may have to uh, look into your use cases. And uh, for example, in the case of if you are taking a, 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 um, a, a open banking or the financial domain, there, there, there can be a difference. As, uh, um, pillars for example there can be loan there can be uh, regular banking or small investment so if you can group these apis in a way that uh, by functionalities because uh, the uh, there is a concept of product api which means that there are apis which allow you to create the functionalities uh, small, small functionalities. And when you put all of these functionalities together and expose it as a API to your external party, it's exposed as a product API. So once you have a proper idea or clear idea of what you are offering to outside or the external consumers, you can group these uh, APIs together and expose it as a, a business use case. Uh, let me read this one. You can see that, right? So in the meantime, yeah. uh, Stefano has clarified, let's say that your software has X features and these features interact in many ways for each use case. So how would you group that content? Uh, what KPIs would you prioritize? Uh, content, for example, on the landing page. Awesome. So um, really good point over here. Uh, this is what uh, we uh, talked in the, the, the workflow as well. We have to measure. So yes, we, we will look into the, uh, the landing page. But more than that, as an API provider, now you also have a visibility on the APIs being accessed. For example, let's say in order to have uh, access, I mean, make the value out of X feature, um, there can be multiple other APIs need to be accessed. So you have those statistics uh, from your backend or from the gateway that you are exposing the APIs. So now you know where to look into and how to group these APIs and put the uh, use cases together. So in terms of pr prioritization of uh, content, uh, yes, the, uh, I mean, we will look into the APIs being uh, uh, access one thing because we have a data about the uh, the transactions in our gateway level. But at the same time, as you mentioned, we also have the data about the uh, 
uh, the landing page uh, or, or the, the page relevant to that API documentation, we do have those data. But more than that, sometimes there can be uh, some APIs multiple times access, but may not be um, important enough. Uh, there can be APIs that is not uh, consumed very frequently, but very important in the, in the, in the uh, workflow. So sometimes the, the, this strategy might not always support that um, uh, APIs. The reason is, uh, uh, for example, if you want to create a, 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 a new instance of a, a, a new container, you do it like once or twice in a, a week or a month. But, um, so, but still that functionality is very crucial. But you Depends may not, on the business model, I guess. Uh, Vandi, uh, we are running a little bit over time. Uh, sure. I think going into the details um, would be interesting to do in the chat. And sure. on reprioritizing content, I think our next speaker may also touch on that. Uh, thank oh. you, Vandi.